Lockridge, who's won 23 of his 25 professional bouts. Lockridge is ranked number two in the world by the WBA. Of Randy Newman, who then had won 11 of his first 12 heavyweight fights, became in the top 10 ranking and a strong heavyweight contender, retired now a financial advisor and a freelance boxing writer. Well, Randy, how do you see this featherweight scrap tonight? This is a very important fight for Lockridge. He lost a highly disputed uh, decision to the champion Pedroza in October of 80. He won a few fights after that, but then he was knocked out in the second round by Juan Laporte. So there are no more losses for him. He's got to win. Lockridge is 23. Mullins is 30. About even in weight, a pound and a half for Lockridge. Same height, same reach. <laughs> now let's go down to the ring announcer, Jim Murata. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Sands Hotel and Casino in Atlantic City, Main Events is pleased to present the best in professional boxing. This is the main event of the evening, set for 10 rounds. Here are your ring officials. Referee, Arthur Mercanti. Your judges, Ray Hoagland and Frank Brunette. Timekeeper, Roy Johnson. Counting for the knockdowns, Frank Cappuccino. And the doctors in attendance, your chief physician, Dr. Frank B. Doggett and Dr. Dennis L. Pacone. Ten rounds of boxing introducing first in the red corner from Spartanburg, South Carolina. He is wearing maroon trunks trimmed in gray and black. He weighs in at 125 pounds, even the veteran Robert Mullins. Mullins. His opponent in the blue corner, formerly of Tacoma, Washington, now living in Maple Shade, New Jersey, with a record of 23 wins, only two losses, 18 of his wins via the knockout route. He weighs in this evening at 126 and one half pounds, wearing blue trunks trimmed in gold. Here he is, the number two featherweight contender in the world, the classy Rocky Lockridge. Lockridge. Good evening. Good evening, Bobby and uh, Rocky. You both know the rules of the Jersey State Athletic Commission. In the event of a knockdown, you must take the eight count. The three knockdown rule has been waived. Is that understood? When I say break, that means you stop boxing and step back. You will be penalized for any illegal blows. Now, is that understood? Shake hands now. Come out boxing. Arthur Mercani. He refereed some of your fights, didn't he, Randy? Certainly did. A few of my fights and 50 championship fights. He's about the best in the world. Well, we're honored to have him here tonight, working this one. The featherweight bout. Here we go. Lockridge in the blue trunks, Mullins in the red trunks. Round one, scheduled 10-rounder. Mullins is supposedly a good boxer. Lockridge is a puncher boxer. Lockridge has an interesting style. He can he can box, but he doesn't use the jab too well, uh, which is the traditional boxer. But he bobs and weaves and throws a lot of combinations, and he keeps moving. There's two good fighters like this. I don't think Arthur's going to have too much work to do tonight. Lockridge, a former USBA champ, second in the world, the featherweight division, ranked by the WBA. He lost in 15 grueling rounds to Panama's Decebo Pedroza. And that's his goal, to fight Pedroza again for the world title. And he's got to win this one and keep going to do that. That's true. He and uh, many other people at that fight thought that Rocky deserved the decision. Uh, the judge from Panama who had the crucial vote called it for Pedroza. So round one. This is a kind of feeling out round. Rocky was just a little over anxious with that right hand he missed. He's a little tense. He's got to loosen up. The judges and the referee will score by rounds. If they're even, they go to the point system. Five point must system. The bell can't save you except in round 10. When the fight is over. Good right hand. It was a good right hand by Lockridge. It really scored and Mullins came back fighting. It's the best. 
Lockridge, as we said, to go against Pedroza again for the world featherweight crown, must keep winning. Every fight's important to him now at this stage of his career. He's 23 years old and obviously on the way. That's the truth. The, uh, the fight, the one loss to Pedroza could have been thrown out the window, but he followed that up with a second round loss by knockout to Laporte, so he can't lose any more fights and stay up in the rankings. Mullins keeps trying to use that left jab, left jab. Makes life a little easier. There he is, scoring twice in a row with it. He's got a good jab. He ought to start turning some into a hook, because Rocky's got that right hand carried low. <laughs> we'll return with more exciting boxing after these messages from our local stations. Now, the featherweight division, the limit is 126 pounds. Lockridge in the blue trunks weighed in at 126 and a half. Mullins, the red trunks, at 125. The first round was kind of even. It was a feeling out round, which this is not. Lockridge scored one good right hand, but Mullins came on with a lot of leather in the last minute. I'd call it even. This round is heating up a lot more. I guess they're warm. Lockridge can hit 25 fights, 18 KOs. Mullins has had 33 fights and 22 KOs. Good ratio for featherweight. Yeah, good punches, both of them. Little rabbit punch over the back of his head. Lockridge is not using a lot of the movement he usually has. Stepping side to side. Lockridge from the West Coast, Tacoma, married his high school sweetheart and has moved here to New Jersey now. Mullins' nose is starting to bleed a little bit. I first saw Lockridge's arm and now he's got a pretty good dose in his mustache. Look at that. Those were not great punches. They were arm punches and there was a lot of popping in the leather. Halfway through round two. See, Mullins is cute. He's not getting caught in that corner. He jabs, and when he gets to the corner, he moves out. He stays in the center of the ring. Good right hand by Lockridge. Good body punches. He counters after that left jab. Comes right in over it. Well, that's how you devastate a boxer. You make him eat his own jab. Good punch. Good punch. He's hurt. Unless he's a possum. He's <laughs> pretty cute again. Small has been around. That's an old trick. See, Mullins is not about to get caught in those corners. He stays in the center of that ring. Sneaky right hand. Well, his chance tonight is some kind of boxing ability. Yeah. 30 seconds left, round two. Featherweight fight. Mullins is coming on the end of this round. Better get off those ropes. for more boxing from Atlantic City. Won 210 out of 218 amateur fights before he turned pro. A busy amateur. He, uh, he didn't even want to turn pro then, but he was very upset about a decision that went against him, so he said, heck with this, let me try the pros. Lockridge in the blue trunks, Robert Mullins in the red trunks. Round three, scheduled 10 round featherweight fight. Rocky's got that kind of low bobbing and weaving style. He protects his chin a lot with those shoulders. You can see the way he's got that chin all the way down and he'll turn. It's a good defense. Look off that jab, Rocky. Come on. Level up, Rocky. Lockridge won the New Jersey 126 pound title from highly regarded veteran Gerald Hayes. His biggest win, the USBA featherweight crown from tough Fel Clemente. Seven rounds in February 1980. Rocky did some damage to Mullins at the end of that last round. It might be showing up here. Mullins is kind of walking back on his heels. Hey, 
Owens has a good stiff jab when he fires it off. He's yeah, got really good enough. And he throws a rat a tat tat series. Yeah. yeah. Coming up to halfway of round three. Rocky always stays inside that punching zone. He doesn't waste a lot of energy moving in and out. He stays in there and looks for his marks. Lockridge in the blue, Mullins in the red trunks. Uh, Mullins should be stepping to the side now. He's got Lockridge covering up. And once the fighter's covered up, you're not going to hit him with the same punch. You've got to step to the side and reposition yourself. Boy, he nearly exposed himself there when that he missed was, that right hand. That was a sloppy miss. Good thing Lockridge wasn't throwing. Well, how do you see it so far? Pretty close fight so far. Uh, Lockridge is scoring the heavier, heavier blows, but Mullins is piling that jab into him. Coming up 30 seconds to go, round three. It's been a quiet round. Yeah, but Lockridge is moving with a little more efficiency. Uh, Mullins is doing things in scoring, but he's running, let's say, at 120%. Uh, Lockridge is moving about 50. That'll take its toll. The fight of the month will return after these messages from our local station. Mullins in the red trunks has defeated such full-fledged lightweights as Johnny Summerhays, Frankie Moultrie, and Hilbert Stevenson. Riding featherweight tonight, Lockridge, number two ranked world featherweight in the world, in the blue trunks. This is round four, scheduled ten-rounder. Mullins is starting to throw early in this in this round. He was using most of his leather in the, in the last minute of the uh, previous rounds. Not a bad idea, but it doesn't win enough. Mullins is pretty bloody. As long as it's just coming out of his nose, it's not a real problem. I want to remind our local stations that we'll be staying here between rounds. Special interview coming up. Round four. Ooh Good combination. Rocky's got to do more of this. He's got to do more swar swarming, more punching. Ever since he lost to Laporte via that second round knockout, he hasn't been the same aggressive fighter. Good right hand. Two good right hands. Now Mullen's trying to fight back. He sure is. He's got to get off those ropes and out in the middle. Yeah. That's his fight. At range, he's scoring the points. He's the better fighter outside, but inside it's all Lockridge. Lockridge moving in now. Has Pindy more in the ropes this round than any round? Yes, he has. I think it's not so much that Lockridge is using better tactics. I think Mullen's legs are getting a little weary. Just saw him sitting on those ropes. <laughs> Rocky is nailing this guy. Mullins is absorbing a lot of punishment now. Want to remind our station we'll be staying here between rounds. Good jab by Lockridge. That's his best jab of the fight. Certainly is. I think Mullins is starting to get a little befuddled. He's not doing well outside and uh, doing nothing inside, but getting hit. But he comes back. That was a wild punch. 30 seconds, round four. Rocky Lockridge, blue trunks. Robert Mullins, the red trunks. Mullins is starting to miss these long looping punches. He just got nailed. He's he hurt. got nailed with that right. Yes, he did. He's hanging out. Well, Kenny's giving him a close look. Look at him, watching him. He's he also he's breathing. Hurt. He's breathing with his mouth wide open. This means he's very tired. Oh, there he got goes. caught. Got caught by the left hook. Nice hook. Six. All right, he's still in action. Right. He beat the count. He gets them in a rest. Well, as we mentioned at the top of tonight's telecast, Big John Tate was scheduled to fight here tonight. 
Badly injured his right hand two weeks ago in a fight in Las Vegas. We caught up with John yesterday at his home in Knoxville, Tennessee. And uh, here's what Tate had to say. Well, I hurt my hand last a uh, couple weeks ago in the Leroy Caldwell fight. And uh, I hurt it in the first round. And I had to fight nine rounds with the injury. So uh, I hurt this knuckle right here. You can see it's been swollen up very bad. And I've been had it in ice and hot water all the week, trying to get it uh, down to our bed to fight this fight tonight. Though evidently the doctor told me this past uh, Monday that I wouldn't be able to fight, so we had to cancel the fight. And it's kind of devastating blow for me to be able to uh, uh, not be able to fight this weekend because I was looking forward to coming to Atlanta City and fighting there. All right, we may have John Page soon on our Fight of the Month series. Here is round five, and Mullins in the red trunks was in deep trouble at the end of round four. We may have John Tate soon, but I don't think we're going to have Mullins around so much longer. He came out, he's not too fresh. Lockridge is having a good workout here. Remember, Lockridge has won 23 of 25 bouts, 23 years old. Oh, Mullins caught Lockridge on the chin with the right hand. I don't think he's hurt. I think he's just grabbing and holding on. Crowd comes alive. Right hand. Yep. right hand lead by Mullen. I think this is the storm before the calm for Mullins. I think this is a desperation rally. Voice you hear with me, Randy Newman, former heavyweight contender. He's written some outstanding boxing articles, by the way. Had a recent one in the New York Times. Oh, what a body punch. Almost collapsed him with that. Right in the liver. Dug the left hook up and brought it up from his toes. There he goes. Two, three. Mercani is going to stop the fight. Not a bad idea. Take a close look at him. It's all over. It's all over. All over. And Lockridge... Continues on. Rocky Lockridge had just won his 24th of 26 fights, his 19th KO. If he continues, he's going to get a shot at Pedroza again for the World Featherweight Championship. This was a good fight for Rocky. He started slowly. He was in with a cutie. He didn't get over anxious. He didn't overextend himself. And he did his business and took him out. The accomplished all around fighter. Yeah, yeah. Now here's a replay. Now watch this. All right, Mullins was already in trouble. There's the left hook that did some more damage. That was a left hook to the body. That was the punch that hurt him about 30 seconds earlier. That's the one that got him in the liver. Yeah. Okay, so it's all over in the fifth round. We'll sum it up. Uh, the fight of the month will return right after the station. Number two ranked featherweight fighter here, Rocky Lottridge, has won the night. Congratulations, Rocky. Thank you very much, Kurt. You, you need everyone now to go back and, and fight Pedroza for the championship. That's right. Uh, not only do I have to prove myself to my people, my people, what, what I'm saying by that is my immediate, but also to the public. Uh, I've been down and out, uh, so to speak, at the end of the year, 81. But this is 1982. I fought once, and this is my second fight for 1982. I'm here to prove myself. Well, you've had 19 KOs now, and uh, how was this, uh, Mullins? The first, I want you to look at his knockdown in the fourth round. Analyze it for us. Well, Coming up. Well, Kurt, he was very tough and determined, as you've seen. Uh, I was cautious and playing a very patient role. I didn't want to get careless to the point to Ooh. where the same thing happened. I caught him with a left hook. You saw that uh, I was obviously cautious to the point where he was punching and all I was doing was catching until he stopped punching and he left himself open for the left hook. Randy, question for him? I thought the, uh, the punch that did the real damage was that left hook you hit him with the body uh, about 30 seconds before you took him out. Yes, that that's right, Randy. Uh, I saw also myself that the body attack was very devastating. And not that I did it continuously because uh, I didn't want to do nothing continuously. I, don't, I didn't want to do the same thing over and over again. I was looking forward to the point when I could throw a body shot and then come back up to the top and seriously do some damage, take him out of there. All right, congratulations to Rocky Lockridge. A TKO, a minute 23 in the fifth round, and uh, he continues on for perhaps a shot at the World Featherweight Crown. Thank you, Kurt and Randy.
We'll return with more boxing action from Atlantic City right after these messages from our local station. For each issue of Ring Magazine, 50 impartial broadcasters, journalists, and boxing historians from around the world on a monthly basis select the top 10 fighters in the 12 traditional weight classes. Tonight, we look at the welterweight division. And starting number seven is Bobby Joe Young. Number six is the English champion, Colin Jones. Roberto Duran is number five. He'll be moving up in weight. Number four is Milton McCrory from Detroit. Number three, Pepino Cuevas. Number two, Roger Stafford of Philadelphia. Number one, Thomas Hearn, who moved to the middleweight division to fight Marvin Hatch. Antonio Nieves, who lives now in Patterson, New Jersey, does not speak English, going against Bobby Wildman Alexander. Nieves has had only ten fights, winning seven, three KOs. Alexander's been around, 13 wins, 11 losses, a draw, four KOs. If you want to know his style, it's his nickname, Wild Man. Like a wild man. That's Nieves you're looking at. He'll be in the blue trunk, Alexander in the red trunk. Eight rounds, featherweight division, round one. What happened to all those great nicknames we used to have? Yeah. Well, we had Hitman Ernst for a while, yeah. and then they cleaned that up. They don't want to be the Hitman any longer. Now we got Wild Man Alexander tonight in the red trunks. <laughs> Evis is a left-hander, southpaw. Well, that'll allow the Wild Man to throw some wild right-hand leads at him and land them. The Evis is supposed to be a pressure fighter, a walk-in slugger, and a good body puncher. Oh. I think the wild man has a good luck shamrock on the right side of his trunks. <laughs> Flailing those arms around as a defense. See, that was a poor right hand because he didn't bring his weight forward. He just leaned back and threw the arm at Nieves. Uh, he got hit with a left, and he walked in on him. Another left to the body, left nice uppercut. Nice uppercut. And Mr. O'Wiley almost turned from a lefty to a righty. Alexander Nevis. keeps walking into punches. He does, but Nevis has got the red nose. Yeah, Nevis has a slight nosebleed right now. Antonio Nieves in the blue trunk. Wild man Alexander in the red trunk. Nieves is having trouble figuring Alexander out because he's flailing around there. Well, yeah, an eccentric fighter like this yeah. can give you trouble. Absolutely. Oh, just hit him with a good left, good right hook. To the belly. Stay tuned for more of the fight of the month. Uh, these featherweights, the ages, Alexander, four years older, about even a weight, a pound and a half for Alexander. Same heights. Four inches in reach for Alexander yeah, in the red trunks. He's got the reach, but he's not using it. He's throwing wild punches from mid-range. Reach is only good when you stick a jab out. We have an interesting bantamweight scrap coming up. Diego Rosario against Ruben Dominguez of Mexico. Rosario from Patterson, New Jersey. A couple of these punches land. We might go home early with this fight. But as is the case, those long ones seldom land. Nieves in the blue trunks, 22 years old. 
And Alexander in the red trunks is 26. Got him with a left. The left hand lead. Alexander's a tough guy to fight because he stays out there and makes those crazy motions, but the others should stay on top of him more because a good offense is also a good defense. They caught him with a left. Oh. Left lead. He nailed him. Nailed him right on the butt. Left hand lead by Antonio Nieves. Alexander bounced on the canvas a few times. He's still right, though. Referee Frank Cappuccino took a good look at him. Round two. Left again, hit him. Now he's trying to finish him off on the ropes. Yeah, but he's getting a little over anxious. Got a punch and step to the side. But Alexander's coming back. Nieves hurt him with a good body shot in there. And there's another one. Nieves has had him down once in this round with a left hand oh. lead. A slip. The old bolo punch backfired. 50 seconds at round two of this featherweight scrap. Nieves scoring in the corner here. He hits with either hand. Good punch with either hand, Nieves. I saw it hits. You just got to put more together in clusters. Alexander's hurt again. He's wobbling now. About 20 seconds to go in round two. Nailed by that left lead. He is a wild man, Alexander. Look at that swing. We'll return with more exciting boxing after these messages from our local station. In the blue trunks, Antonio Nieves. Wild man, Bobby Alexander in the red trunks. He's been down. He's in trouble. Nieves could end it in this round. Unless came Alexander out, changes his tactics a little. He came out soaking wet. Looks like he gave him a shower in that corner, and I'm sure the corner's nice and wet now so somebody can slip. A wild man tries. You've got to give him credit for showing up. Nevis is a cool customer. Yeah, he's not uh, getting uh, flustered by all the wild man's tactics. Just really leveraged the punch into the body there. There he had a hard left to the body, came back with a left to the jaw. Good hook. When he ever sets, boy, he really delivers that weight. That's what a punch is. Wild man is throwing arm punches that are slapping. He tries. I think you about summed it up. Round three, featherweight fight. You never have us way ahead here in points. But you're right. You can never criticize a fighter when he tries, only when he just lays down. Wild man got up. Nieves is satisfied to take pot shots at, at Alexander, try to take him out with one. Knockouts usually don't occur that way. You've got to throw the punches in combination. Uh, and let the body with that left again. Alexander's in trouble, as he has been since the first round. Well, he doubles the effect of Nieves' punches. He runs into them. We're in the last minute of round three. Nieves is looking to land that left hook or that left hand lead that he's been very effective with. Yeah. Alexander's happy to close his eyes and throw in what we call the In God We Trust. Ooh, low blow. Very low. Remember, Nieves is a left hander of Southpaw, and he could hit with it. He has been throwing that right, that uh, left hand lead too much this round. There he caught him. Nieves yeah. just answered the low blow. Been warned yeah, by Frank, Frank, Frank Cappuccino. Yeah. 
All right, stay tuned for more boxing from Atlantic City. Back to the Sands Hotel here in Atlantic City for the second in our new series of the Fight of the Month. Round four, featherweight scrap, Antonio Nieves in the blue trunks, wild man Bobby Alexander in the red trunks. Alexander is wild. He's a grabber. He's flailing those arms around. Randy Newman, how does this affect you when you fight against a fellow like this? Believe it or not, it's more difficult to keep your concentration on line with a guy like this. When you're fighting a skilled fighter who's on top of you and always throwing legitimate punches, you're automatically kept on line just by reactions. With a guy like this, he's out there flailing. You've got to really set your sights on what you want to do. And the Evans is not doing a good job of that. Randy Newman, former heavyweight contender, now freelance boxing writer and financial advisor. An unusual man, Randy Newman, a college graduate, one of the few in the boxing game, a business degree graduate, telling people what to do with their money. Well, I know early in this game that it wouldn't be forever, even if I wanted to do it. It never is. This is round four. Nieves has won every round. Yeah. He's uh, nearly had another low blow there. They're, they're getting a little sloppy. They're tired, and uh, I know Nieves is frustrated, and Wild Man is just, look, there goes their mouthpiece. See, in the amateurs, they stop the fight for lost mouthpiece. In the pros, they don't. Alexander was hurt, but he wasn't a knockdown. He was hurt, but he slipped. His yeah, that was went out under him. That wasn't a knockdown. Better keep his mouth closed tight or he's going to crack a few teeth without a mouthpiece. Nieves goes after him, the left hander. Oh, he's weaving much too low. He's... Oh, I belted him uh, with a good left in the body that time, Nieves did. I think Alexander's starting to hear footsteps. game though. See, when you miss a wild punch like that, it takes more out of you than when you score because you've got to recoil all the way and that muscle just get ex gets overextended. You have to regroup yourself. Yeah, it's very tiring. This fight we're seeing... hit that, we'd have hit him with that right hand. It was, huh. it was all over. This fight, you see clusters of, of uh, decent combinations, but then there are lag times, you know, 20, 30 seconds. Round four, heading into the last 10 seconds. <laughs> the fight of the month will return at... Round five, featherweights Antonio Nieves in the blue, wild man Bobby Alexander in the red. We saw Alexander lose his mouth, Pete, there, and uh, boy, and he, they were working on his lower lip. He evidently had the badly cut lower lip. Yeah. Mouthpiece, the rules are different than the amateurs and the pros. And the amateurs, they'll stop the fight and watch it out and give the guy a break. If the pros had that rule, and the fighters that I grew up with in Gleason's gym, everybody would practice mouthpiece spitting along with jumping rope and punching bags. <laughs> The mouthpiece actors. <laughs> Nieves has won every round. Here in New Jersey, they score by rounds. If they're even, then they go to the point system. Mouthpiece is an important piece of equipment. It's not so much that it's going to protect your teeth from getting knocked out because they still do in a mouthpiece, but they protect the teeth from one another. If you get hit with an uppercut with no mouthpiece, the teeth will smash each other. I was going to say good point, but I'll take it back. <laughs> One time, Bobby Gleason told me he's working Wayne Bathia's corner, and Bathia was fighting the bear, Sonny Liston. There goes another mouthpiece. And Bathia came back from an especially tough round with Liston. Gleason took the mouthpiece out, and there were three teeth in it. <laughs> Imagine if Liston hit you, there would be three teeth in it. Alexander now has lost his mouthpiece again. No, this is Navis this time. Oh, Navis lost it. Yeah. Round five, featherweight bout. Nieves in the blue, Alexander in the red trunk. Scheduled eight rounder. We have an interesting bantamweight bout coming up. 
Diego Rosario from Patterson, New Jersey, will be taking on Ruben Dominguez from Mexico City. So stay with us on this Fight of the Month series. Somebody's got a bad cut. It looks like it's near his forehead. He's even wiping it out. Holy Xander doesn't appear as... Oh, my God. Really. Look at that. Look at that cut down. Yeah. There's really... Uh, look at that blood coming out of that cut in the forehead. That's nice purple arterial bleeding. It's up on a high forehead, isn't it? Oh. An, easy, an easier place to get cut. The banged heads. That's not from a punch. They get butted. Well, take a look at that cut. You don't usually see scalp wounds, but when you do, they bleed profusely. You can see the cut on the Evis in the blue trunks up on the middle of his forehead, and it's really flowing. We'll return with more boxing action from Atlantic City right after these. They really went to work on that cut on the Evis' forehead. Round six in Alexander's. Looked like he was gone in round three. Uh, came bouncing out this time. Alexander in the red trunks. I think Mr. Nieves should learn a lesson from this. That lesson is 